Do you remember the first time you stumbled upon the 1976 TV series Quincy Me? Perhaps it was a lazy Sunday afternoon, and you found yourself captivated by the gripping tales of forensic medicine and the relentless pursuit of truth. Or maybe it was a late night rerun that caught you by surprise, introducing you to the world of Dr. Quincy and his unyielding commitment to solving mysteries that the world tried to bury. No matter how you first crossed paths with this iconic show, chances are it left an indelible mark on your TV watching journey. As we delve into the enigmatic world of Quincy Me, prepare to be astounded by some lesser known tidbits about the series that kept us on the edge of our seats. From fascinating behind the scenes anecdotes to the impact it had on the real world practice of forensic science, there's a treasure trove of facts waiting to be uncovered. So, fasten your seatbelts as we embark on a journey through time and television, exploring the unexpected and intriguing facets of Quincy Me. That will reignite your nostalgia and deepen your appreciation for this classic series. Get ready to be entertained, enlightened, and amazed, because the curtain is about to rise on a world you thought you knew. You knew, you knew, you knew. Quincy Me is a 1976 TV series that left an indelible mark on the world of crime dramas and medical procedurals. Created by Glenna Larson and Lou Shaw, the show followed the life and work of Dr. Quincy, portrayed brilliantly by Jack Klugman, a determined forensic pathologist with an unwavering commitment to uncovering the truth behind mysterious deaths. Set in Los Angeles, the series delved into the gritty world of autopsies, and crime investigations, offering a unique blend of medical expertise and detective work. Quincy's character, with his strong sense of justice and relentless pursuit of answers, became an iconic figure in television history. His unorthodox methods and penchant for butting heads with authority figures made him a beloved and memorable character. Moreover, the show was known for its distinctive style, weaving social issues into its narratives, tackling topics like public health, environmental hazards, and ethical dilemmas, often sparking discussions and raising awareness. Quincy Me left an enduring impact on popular culture by paving the way for a new breed of TV shows that combined medical and investigative elements, a formula that has since become a staple in the genre. It also contributed to the rise of forensic science's portrayal in media, influencing subsequent crime dramas like CSI and Bones. In essence, Quincy Me not only entertained but also educated and challenged viewers, leaving a lasting legacy in the world of television, of television, of television. In the annals of television history, few series have left as enduring a mark as Quincy Me which first graced our screens in 1976. While the show is fondly remembered for its gripping medical mysteries and the indomitable presence of Jack Kludman as the titular character, there are lesser known facets of this iconic series that deserve a closer look. One intriguing mystery that rivaled those Quincy solved on screen was the enigma surrounding his first name. Throughout the show's run, Quincy's first name was never revealed. It was a tantalizing secret that left viewers speculating. However, in a blink and yell miss it moment, an episode discreetly unveiled his first initial. On one of Quincy's business cards briefly seen on the show, it bore the name Dr. R. Quincy. This morsel of information provided fans with a morsel of his elusive identity. Another intriguing aspect of the show's legacy is the longevity of its cast members. With the sad passing of Val Bisoglio on October 18, 2021, Robert Ito emerged as the last surviving member of the original cast. Remarkably, most of the cast members, including Robert Ito, thrived well into their 90s, defying the odds in a profession notorious for its tumultuous lifestyle. Only John S. Rajan, who passed away at the age of 83, fell short of that milestone. Their enduring presence serves as a testament to the enduring appeal of Quincy Me. Beyond the intriguing trivia and the remarkable longevity of its cast, Quincy Me boasted a unique on-set feature, a fully functional gas chromatograph. This scientific instrument, typically found in laboratories rather than on a TV set, added an air of authenticity to the series. It was a nod to the meticulous attention to detail that the creators and producers brought to the show's depiction of forensic medicine. In retrospect, Quincy Me was more than just a television series, it was a cultural touchstone that continues to captivate audiences. 
These intriguing tidbits about the show's mysteries, its cast's longevity, and its dedication to authenticity only deepen our appreciation for this classic series that forever etched Dr. R. Quincy into our memories. 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 In the world of 1970s television, Quincy Me stood out not only for its gripping forensic drama, but also for the unexpected evolution of its cast and the intriguing real-life connections that emerged behind the scenes. One remarkable development involved Mark Scott Taylor, initially hired as a technical advisor for the series. His expertise in operating electron microscopes and other complex instruments proved invaluable. Rather than investing in training the actors to convincingly handle the equipment, the show's producers opted for a cost-effective solution. Taylor became a semi-regular cast member. Over time, his role expanded significantly, culminating in an episode where his character, Mark, played a pivotal role in helping Dr. Quincy save a life. Taylor's contributions didn't stop there. He even contributed a couple of scripts to the show. By the time the series reached its seventh season, he had ascended to the position of co-producer, a testament to his unique journey from technical advisor to a key creative force. Another intriguing facet of the show's cast history centered around Anita Gillette. In the final season, she portrayed Dr. Emily Hanover, Quincy's wife. What makes this casting choice particularly intriguing is that Anita Gillette had previously played another significant role in the series, that of Quincy's first wife, who tragically succumbed to a brain tumor. This dual portrayal by Gillette added a poignant layer to the show's narrative, blurring the lines between fiction and reality in the world of Quincy Me. Outside the studio, the show's iconic star, Jack Kludman, had an unexpected connection to the world of horse racing. Kludman, known for his role as Dr. Quincy, was part owner of a racehorse named Jacqueline Kludman. In an amusing twist of fate, the horse's name, Jacqueline, was chosen somewhat accidentally. A picture of this equine venture even found its place in Quincy's houseboat, a subtle nod to Kludman's real-life involvement in the sport. Jacqueline Kludman notably finished third in the 1980 Kentucky Derby, an achievement that added an intriguing layer of celebrity to the world of horse racing. In the realm of television, Quincy Me was not just a crime-solving drama, it was a series where reality and fiction intersected in unexpected ways. From the transition of a technical advisor to a co-producer to the dual roles played by one actress, and even the real-life horse racing connections of its star, the show left a lasting mark that went beyond the confines of its episodes. Oops, oops, oops. In the world of 1976 television, Quincy Me emerged as a groundbreaking series that blended medical drama with detective intrigue. While the show was known for its riveting storytelling and compelling characters, one of its most fascinating aspects was its real-life inspiration. Dr. Thomas Noguchi, the Los Angeles County medical examiner, served as the news for the titular character, Dr. Quincy. Dr. Noguchi was renowned for his often controversial autopsy conclusions, a trait that Quincy shared on screen. Noguchi performed autopsies on several Hollywood icons, including Marilyn Monroe, Natalie Wood, and John Belushi, casting shadows of doubt on official accounts. In a twist worthy of the Quincy series, Noguchi also lent his expertise to the show as a technical advisor. What sets Quincy me? Apart from other series is its connection to Dr. Noguchi's investigative zeal. He famously raised questions about the official account of Robert F. Kennedy's assassination, contending that Sirhan Sirhan could not have fired the fatal shot. This blend of real-life intrigue and medical examination formed the core of the show's appeal. Moreover, the show's concept found its roots in the Canadian series Wojcik, further highlighting its commitment to authenticity and gritty realism. The legacy of Quincy Me endures as a testament to the fascinating intersection of real-life forensic work and gripping television drama. Quincy Me ran for a total of 148 episodes, with the indomitable Jack Kludman appearing in 147 of them. However, in the episode titled Has Anybody Here Seen Quincy? A peculiar absence occurred. Dr. Quincy had not vanished from the story, but Kludman's voice was notably absent, and he remained unseen throughout. The reason, Kludman's displeasure with the script penned by Michael Sloan and Glenna Larson. In this particular episode, a body brought into the morgue turned out to be inexplicably alive, a premise that clashed with Quincy's fastidiousness. Kludman found this storyline laughable, and thus, his character was absent from the episode. 
in the world of television history, Quincy Me remains a landmark series that navigated the complex realms of forensic medicine and detective work. With its roots in the enigmatic Dr. Thomas Noguchi and a commitment to gritty realism, the show captivated audiences with its blend of fact and fiction. And, as a curious footnote, the show found itself immortalized in the lyrics of the song TV Party by Black Flag, cementing its status as a cultural touchstone. In the end, Quincy Me stands as a testament to the enduring fascination with the intersection of medicine, mystery, and television storytelling, all while bearing the indelible mark of Dr. Thomas Noguchi's legacy. 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 As we draw the curtain on this nostalgic journey through the corridors of television history, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on the indelible mark left by the 1976 TV series, Quincy Me. This iconic show, with its compelling characters and gripping mysteries, has woven itself into the fabric of countless lives. Perhaps it was the relentless pursuit of truth by the brilliant Dr. Quincy, or the heart-pounding moments as each medical puzzle unraveled, that drew you in. Maybe it was the camaraderie of the supporting cast, the memorable cases, or the thought-provoking ethical dilemmas that left you contemplating long after the credits rolled. Quincy me wasn't just a TV series, it was an experience that resonated with viewers, sparking conversations, inspiring careers, and forging personal connections. It's a testament to the power of storytelling and the enduring impact of characters who refuse to be forgotten. Now, I invite you to share your treasured memories, your favorite episodes, or the ways in which Quincy Me left an imprint on your life. Your stories and insights are a testament to the show's enduring legacy, and they help keep its spirit alive. Thank you for joining us on this journey down memory lane, and for sharing your thoughts and memories. Your unique perspective enriches the tapestry of Quincy Me's history. Keep those memories alive, and keep the conversation going. Until next time, stay curious and keep exploring the stories that shape us all. Us all.